The year is 353 post Draconis. Premier Martin has died. At age 89, Premier Martin has guided the People's Union from its glorious birth to its successful present, and laid the groundwork for a Varanist future for generations to come. Whilst we mourn his death, the Union Assembly has elected a new Premier, Ferdinand Viren. However, not all are happy with the change in leadership. Premier Viren promises a great deal of reform over his predecessor, and the Union is feeling the effects of this uncertainty. As Kingshaw's economy becomes sluggish, Safir feels the effects of this great period of change. As the cost to import materials and staple foods begins to rise to satiate the newly established domestic population of the Republic, the time has come to invest in greater self-sufficiency. Safir's existence is tied to the exploitation of a resource sector, and one resource promises greater return than any other. Oil. This black gold will allow our Republic to stand on its own two feet, and give us the support we need to truly expand and prosper. For the people and the Union, arise now, Republic of Safir. Welcome back to episode 3 of The Republic of Safir. As you can see there, our beautiful first settlement is over glinting in the distance right after the first frost that it has endured has ended. It is the beginning of spring in the uh, second year, excuse me, the third year of our glorious Republic of Safir. And a lot has uh, changed um, since we first began. We have a burgeoning construction sector, our first uh, settlement with a lot of happy people. As you can see, our population has increased uh, as a result of a large amount of births compared to, like, obviously, right? Our uh, birth rate is a lot higher than our death rate, which is a small thing, but... Um, <laughs> Very good uh, in, in this game. However, we are rapidly hemorrhaging money. Last month alone, we spent $22,000, or rubles, whatever currency King Shas uses, um, just to keep the nation afloat. I let the game run through spring. I did some work over here. I connected, expanded out this highway um, to connect up to this... Uh, border outpost over here uh which i want to mention while this border outpost connects up to the province of fjordland and the greater republic of kingshas um this one connects up to another nation this is over here uh the Faranese republic but that's neither here nor there what are we doing this episode well, uh, once these gravel roads get finished, because I've decided that the mud roads, they're just not doing it, especially if we want to make an industrial sector out here, uh, we need to upgrade to gravel. So I got the boys, they're working on that, uh, using our workers uh, at our bus station. That's right, we are no longer importing foreign workers, we're using our own labor. Uh, hence why we have a 22-21% unemployment rate. Because this is more or less the only job people have. So, let's fix that, right? Uh, I've mentioned this before, but something I really want to get into once we get into fossil fuels here. There's a lot of oil. You see there it has quality of source. Don't worry about that. It, uh, that more so refers to um, how much oil there is more than, like, we're not going to have to refine the oil before we send it off. It's just uh, a measure of how much oil there is. Unfortunately, because we do not have uh, research to uh, see where the oil is, um, I can't really pre-plan this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in blind. So I'd like to have it more this way, ideally. That way we can expand out the city a little more. Um, the pump jacks do not need people to operate. Uh, nor do the trains uh, to export the oil. We could also export the oil with uh, road vehicles, and we very well might do that. 
but trains are the ultimate ideal because they're quick, efficient, and can export a lot all at once. Uh, with trains, where we might be able to make a profit, uh, and that is incredibly necessary if we want to continue expanding. Because of the 4.5 million rubles that we had when we started this save, we now only have 3.2 million. And this is all that we built. So, we definitely need to get everything together. So, I built that one there. Uh, I want to... I think I want roughly four of these. So... I also, I also want to leave plenty of room to be able to... Uh, expand out this industry, uh, include things such as refining um, and things like plastic production, all that good stuff. If we're producing the oil here, we might as well be able to, might as well plan to uh, do all that we can with it, but that's in the distant future. Right now, we simply want to make a profit and uh, ignore these city names. They get made automatically. Um, and I don't like them. However, there is something that I do want to do, first and foremost. I have received a couple of suggestions uh, for our city name, uh, and I believe I'm going for Martinstadt. So, Premier Martin, you know, he's the, the leader of King Shas, the Union, um, and as you may have heard in the uh, intro Old man Martin has died. So to honor him and the efforts that he has put forward to modernizing our Grand Union and allowing us to settle in this virgin new land, we are renaming our first settlement in his honor. So, moving on. We have all of these uh, derricks, but we also need to uh, have a place for them to load things onto. Now that we have the derricks themselves placed, let's expand out our road network. We're going to go with the gravel roads uh, because they are... Oops, that's the wrong button. We're going to go with the gravel roads because they are cheap and fast, and that's what we're looking for here. There's some terrain that we want to negotiate here. We're coming up to the uh, headwater of the creek that supplies our water. So, we're com going to completely disrespect that and continue up following along it. It just, you know, it's flat, so might as well take advantage of that, right? So, we're producing oil. We do not have the means to make an oil refinery, so we shouldn't really worry about that right now. Uh, the oil refinery, though, takes in oil and turns it into fuel and bitumen. Uh, bitumen eventually, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly, uh, yeah, the oil, raw oil, uh, apparently, gets, uh, put into the plastics factory as well. That's something we should look into as well. Uh, does this need oil? It does, when we want to make chemicals. So this actually has the potential to be a rather important industrial area. Uh, we may just wind up doing all that manufacturing somewhere else, though. So, uh, just thinking here for a second. I want to do this, connect that up, and we'll send the boys off to start building all of this. So we'll place this here. We'll probably expand out this oil field eventually, especially as we work on the refineries and all of that stuff, so it is probably best that we do this larger one up front, uh, and then we should connect up our pipelines. So we want multiple to go into one, like so. So we have four currently. Do, 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 do. Let's do something like this. <sighs> Trying to get it to not connect up to anything, actually. Let's see if we can't manage to connect that up like that. We can, that's great. So, now that we have that... Hmm. I don't want to cover this entire area in pipelines, but I think that might be what winds up happening. Pipe spaghetti is ubiquitous in this game, but we want to try to avoid it where we can, actually. Essentially, we're doing our best not to 
hinder our expansion. I could just drag a road straight from here to here, but then that would block off pretty much this area as being usable. So we're trying to avoid that. Now that we have that... Once again, we don't want to hinder our expansion, so we don't want to actually feed everything into the train station, because then we can't splinter off the oil to go somewhere else. So... Right after this, as stupid as it may seem, I'm going to place one of these splitters. Just like this. So basically, these three derricks will feed into this, which then feeds into the uh, splitter, which then can split off and feed into multiple different things. That way, all of the oil pumps collectively contribute to this thing, which is then fed off to where it needs to go. This one I'll just put into the train station. I don't, don't care that much, right? <laughs> so let's see if we can't do something like that. We can, because the terrain is actually helping us here. Because this is built up on a bit of a hill, uh, it's able to just go straight up and over the road. So can I do something like... Ooh, wants an underground. Did I build this wrong? I think I did. Perfect. And it already builds our pipe for us. Uh, next, we are going to come over to this one. So this one is not... Terrain is not helping us here. So what we're going to do is... Basically, this, then we'll come over here, drop it down to reduce the cost, and then we'll go underground. Maybe? Maybe I'll just go underground the whole way. Do I want to go underground the whole way? <laughs> I think I also want to add a vehicle loading and unloading station. Like so. We'll, yeah, we'll do it like this. That way, uh, if I need to, I can just manually tell a truck to go something. I'm also unsure if I can... See, that has an output, but I'm not sure if it would feed from here into that over. So I'm just going to go direct from the splitter. Which is unfortunate, but we still have one output that we can use for, say, oil refining. Alright, so that is the basics of our oil industry. But, uh, it is worth seeing... Let's see, none of this would need water. However, all of this needs power. So this should be connected up already. This derrick specifically should already be connected up to our power station. Also going to temporary, te da, 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 temporarily add a mud road right here. That way I can upgrade this to gravel. We'll also set these to high. and tell our construction offices to build this. Because I've already given them so many constructions that they're quite busy. Right, so... Now that we have this road being built, we have all of this planned out, let's work on power. So this is already connected up to this one, so let's see if we can get all of this connected up to a single power station. And we can, which is great. So we're just going to do something like this. And then what we will do is we have our medium power switch. We will build another one over here. See, this is why we don't block ourselves in. Because we have plenty of room to do this. 
We'll just come right here. And then we can build our switch here. That should give us enough room to negotiate where the power we want the power lines to go. We'll drag our medium voltage, our highest capacity medium voltage line, all the way over here. We're blocking a good bit of buildable terrain, but we can always work around the power line if we need to. Then, now that we have that, we're going to leave this one open in case we need to expand it off. Actually, I think it's far more likely that we want to use this one to come downward. So, we're actually going to leave that alone and use our wires. We'll do the highest capacity voltage wires because this one station is pretty much powering this entire district. So, let's go into our underground view. Let's see if we can't just do like that. Perfect. Alrighty. So that's that planned. Now, the last thing we might want to look at is rails. So... I think let's wait until this some of this gets built up and then we'll start looking at railways. So, see you all in a second. Alrighty, it's not been that long since I've left you, but now that we have all of our workers easily able to be picked up, um, construction is moving extremely quickly. That was our big limiting factor in getting the city set up, was we were relying on foreign workers. So, um, now that we have some of these roads built up, uh, I think... I want to really think about how I want uh, the rest of the city to be laid out. Not the city, um, the railway. So, up here we have our railway connection. I'm going to start with the wood-based railway simply because it's cheaper. The biggest hurdle initially is getting over this big uh, terrain problem. However, we have our glorious little excavator that chills up here until we need it. So with that we can just quickly flatten all of this terrain out for the most part. And I don't want to do this, and I think this will only be a temporary measure. But we want the railway to go two different directions. We want the industrial railway to go this way. That way we can uh, connect it up to all the industries we're building out here. But secondarily, we want the railway to go past Martinstadt and over down the river to accommodate whatever we build here, here, you know, and go down into uh, further on. You'll notice here on the map, everything we built here is in a very small corner of the map. So we still have a lot of area that we still need to connect up. Uh, this terrain is going to be very, very tricky to accommodate. And I don't really see an easy way to do it. So I definitely want to come across before we start getting our frontage roads and whatnot. So probably something like this. And uh, before I approve any sort of construction, I'll definitely be coming back to see if the terrain is too severe. Like, this is not great. Let's be very clear. I'm perfectly aware that, like, that kind of grade is crazy for a train. However, that's kind of what we have to deal with right now. Um, <laughs> trains and glorious uh, Republic of Sapir are just built differently. So, just thinking of how I want to lay this out, I kind of want this to be just a straight shot that way. That restricts our building area here and here, but I think that is what we're going to do. So we are going to do a small S-bend here. We must just do a straight shot like this. Basically like that. Then we'll build a bridge up and over this road and over into the other side of the river. 
will also drag down our second line because double track is uh, the best track. And now we need to think about this. Uh, I think what we want to do is cross the road here. Basically come in and around. And try to take up as little space near the highway as possible. So, I'm thinking, basically, the thought process is, we may do something here, we may push the power line out to accommodate industries here, uh, and we may also be building things here. But with this terrain, I don't want to just come in and over immediately. So I'm thinking, coming in here, having a rail yard here, and allowing train to be able to go up and around is the best option. So with that being said, we need to work on our rail infrastructure, and I think this these two blocks here will be exactly that. So see if I can't do something like this. We want our rail line to essentially come in probably roughly like this. We'll have a decently large curve to accommodate the intersections here. We'll try to keep it double tracked for as much as we can. Then using our terrain uh, features, we'll bring this up and over. Just about like that. I know this is probably horribly unrealistic. I mean, again, think of the grades. Just about like this. And... Hmm. Can I do this? No. But I can do that. That is just incredibly steep. What if I do that? Just to, just to see. We'll do that. Oh, it doesn't want to let me do it now. How bad is that? Well, we have a bump there. But honestly, for the most part, that's not... horrible. Let's come back and do it on this side, too. I think we can deal with that. As awful as that is. <laughs> so then we will come through here. And I think we'll go down to single track on this side. I'm over, narrowly avoiding the building. This is mostly flat, so we're doing okay. And then... We want this to essentially come in as tightly as we can. And connect up like this. Then we'll just feed all of these into... Track. And have an X crossing here. Ooh, that's bendy for some reason. I don't like that. Alright. So, we have our train tracks. But how are they going to get built? Well, we need three things uh, to make these railways functional. We need a depot, we need a construction office... And we need a fueling station. So first things first, let's come into our construction office and get one of these four vehicle ones. Uh, I want to, I want to basically put these all as tightly as I can together. So this guy can be pretty much just like that, and then we can feed this directly into tracks. Maybe. Crossing not allowed. Makes things a little more difficult. Right. So, I know it's difficult to see because of the, uh, the light. So, what if I did... That works. And if that works, then I can do something like this. 
then we'll do an X crossing here. Maybe. Yes. And I know this is very funky, but the train construction uh, office is special in that the trains in there can just turn around on a dime. Right, so that's that. Let's connect that up to the road. It already is. Is this in... It is in range of our bus station here, which is very important. Last thing uh, we want here specifically is a depot. So if we come over to our trains, we can grab a train depot. And this is going to be difficult to fit in. I think we might actually put this over here. Basically like that. And then we'll go back and grab our depot. Because this is, remember, this is coming across like... Ooh, we may need a bridge. <laughs> remember how I said I didn't want to cut us off? Well, remember, the cheap uh, pipelines I was trying to build uh, have done exactly that. So while we are here, this is a good time to address that issue. We'll come into our liquids. I'm very cognizant of how long this episode is going on already, so try and hurry. Right. We will continue feeding the track out this way. Pretty much straight on if we can manage it. And then we'll pretty much immediately curve it around to go this way. Right, and we will deal with that later. We can always refix the road, but right now we need to fix our liquids. So we'll bring our pipes over. Now that that's built, we will confirm our train. And finally... Ooh, squeeze this in just barely between uh, the power line and the road here. And just about fit it. Just like that. Perfect. Literally. I know I say perfect a lot, but like that was exactly perfect. This is a big problem. Can I get any crossing here? Yes. Okay, so it was freaking out for nothing, but we've got it now. And we feed that in like that. And finally... Perfect. Bring that over and feed these tracks in. Beautiful. Then last but not least, we have our train refueling station we have to shove in here somewhere. And of course, this is probably the most important construction because otherwise our trains will stall out and uh, die. <laughs> we'll place a very small one. Uh, somewhere along here. Considering that this is going to be a relatively main track, and it's not like we can really fit much else here, I think I'll put the train refueling station right here if I can just about manage it. And all we need to do is link these up as tightly as we can. This one's going to be more difficult, but I think it's still possible. Come on, please. Oh, I think I might have to sacrifice um, room for the bridge, which I really don't want to do, but I think might be necessary. So we'll continue bringing the wood railway along here, trying to keep this as straight as possible. 
then essentially just do something like this. And that works perfectly. Then we will shorten this as much as we can, simply so we can just connect on and start bringing the bridge up and over. All right, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is an oil industry and train industry planned out and started. I will show you all the finished product when it is done. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we have fantastic news. Our co train construction office has just been completed. While uh, we were waiting, I bought two uh, disassembled rail construction units and a truck to import them. We're going to tell it to pick up vehicles and drop them off here and tell it to go. As you can see, it also... The train construction office also needs uh, gravel, steel, prefab panels, bricks, boards, and all of the other things. So we're going to go up here to our uh, fuel distribution office, which I set up earlier, and tell them to start delivering fuel here. We're also going to come up to our flatbed trucks and tell them that they can load uh, steel prefab they can load basically whatever they need from our open storages, uh, unless the storage is below 50%. Do, do, do. And they can bring it here. And then finally, we'll go to our... Uh, let's see, where is it at? Covered trucks. We're going to say that they can load electronic components from the warehouse if it's above 50%. That they can drop it off here. If it's below 70%. Then last but not least, we need gravel. So let's find our dumpers. They're right here. We're going to just tell them to load directly here. If it's below 70%. Uh, we're also going to let them load from the aggregate storage if it's below or above 50%. Alrighty. So hopefully the way I just set this up will mean they'll see if they can get things from here first uh, and bring it here rather than importing everything. Because as you can see here, while we are making a dent using trucks to export oil from this derrick, uh, we're not anywhere near cutting it close to breaking even. We are rapidly hemorrhaging money. So, now that both of our train construction units are done, uh, arrived at the office, so we can bring this guy and put him back in the depot. And we will use him when we need him next time. Alrighty, so now that we have our distribution and logistics set up, um, we just wait once again. Uh, before I let you go, you can see that we're working on our highway as well. Every time I see that uh, the dump trucks and whatnot are not busy in the construction office, that means that I can tell them to do stuff over here. Uh, I also had to do an emergency fix here and make two one-way roads uh, because the, the old way with these gravel roads are two-way, right? And the only way to set one-way roads is with the asphalt roads. So I had to do that because otherwise everything was getting clogged up here and I would have to somehow fix that. Alrighty, I will come back to you when I have another update. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, as we are in fall and approaching winter, I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on. Our railroad construction office is still doing great work. Uh, we have our oil pumps and derricks working efficiently and loading into our uh, oil train station. Uh, and we are off camera because we were having issues. I built a police station uh, in which we need to build or purchase a couple of these police cars, actually. We've also purchased or built a courthouse. We're also expanding out our town slightly this way. As you can see, we have a bunch of uh, relatively buildable land, so I figured we would use it. And uh, yeah, we're also building a prison down here, 
to uh, send all of our unruly uh, populace <laughs> when they begin to act up. And uh, yeah, pretty much we just need to wait once again. But things are definitely happening. Just slowly. See you soon. Alrighty, as we begin work on a new neighborhood here across the highway, uh, and as the first snow falls, that was completely unplanned, I have purchased my first locomotive. Now, the rail to the uh, oils thing is not yet built, but... Uh, and it seems that uh, I accidentally turned off the <laughs> the construction over there. But, um, theoretically, they should be working on it now. <laughs> Gentlemen, it has taken far much longer than I would have liked. As we approach the end of winter in our fourth year, not only have we uh, expanded the city over here, but already completed another neighborhood. Um... We've established a prison complex along with a judicial system and uh, built pretty much our entire oil network. The only thing we were waiting on is our rail construction office to connect this single line right here. But it is done. So what we can do now is come in here, create this on a new line, tell it to go here, unload all of its cargo, and then come back here to load up and wait until loaded and it is off ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in today i really appreciate the support um i hope this video gets uh, a little bit better of an audience than the last one i think the length really got me but um yeah if you enjoy this kind of content please consider liking and subscribing uh drop your feedback down in the comments i would greatly appreciate it and uh, join my Discord and consider joining my Patreon. Alrighty, y'all. Have a good one.